Today we're going to be looking at industry updates regarding whole life insurance. We'll look at two life insurance companies that I personally have policies with in terms of their dividend rates, guaranteed rates, policy loan rates, and then certain things that have been occurring in the industry and in the infinite banking space as a whole and some things that I see happening that I feel like you should be aware of as a potential customer or if you're already an existing client customer and you've been taught a certain concept or strategy in terms of how you are using your whole life insurance policy. If you're a client of mine, you've been working with me personally and maybe you worked with someone else for your life insurance. So let's say you're a client and I'm coaching you on your personal finances, right? And we're paying off debt and we're building credit and we're leveraging the HELOC, the PLOC, the credit cards, and we're creating cash flow, building our vision and our dreams and goals for financial freedom. But either before our relationship started or maybe after you worked with another agency. So maybe you, didn't, maybe you didn't work with me directly, but you worked with maybe one of my partners or one of the other content creators in the space that teach infinite banking or just becoming your own banker or whatever the marketing term is that uh, influence you to purchase a whole life insurance contract. That's one thing there. But then there's the second kind of philosophy ideology is once you do have a life insurance contract in place and you're building cash value, how you go about using that policy, right? And so there's a, a problem that has been really brewing up over the years that I definitely want to address. And I think I have a unique perspective here because I'm someone that actually tested it and can show you what, what the results have been. And then it's really up to you to determine if that's something you actually want to be doing with your cash value once you actually have a policy in place. So there's the element of getting educated. You say, okay, wow, what a wonderful concept, become my own banker and you know, tax-free income and tax-free use of money and leveraging and death benefit and tax-free death benefit and uh, you know, passing wealth to the next generation, all these wonderful things. And then you get into policy design. Okay, I want to design it for high cash value and you know, minimum premium. I don't want to have such a high expense up front. I'm focused on the cash value more than the death benefit. I'm focused on the growth, right? All these different things. Okay, cool. Now you got the design, the education part. Then the third part is the use. How are you actually using the policy? So we'll dive into that towards the end of the video. For now, we're going to take it to the whiteboard and look at some industry updates. And I just figured, let me just pull two of one of the most popular insurance companies that get used to purchase whole life insurance that then is designed in a particular way for high cash value performance leverage etc etc so again i personally have policies with mass mutual and guardian and for the most part most of my clients also have mass mutual and guardian some of my clients have northwestern uh, new york life foresters maybe um lafayette penn so there's really about maybe 10 to 12 commonly used life insurance companies that agents like myself other content creators that sell whole life will typically use and it's really one of those names that i've mentioned those are the most popular ones so just looking at these two and what's nice is this is really the general range what these loan rates guarantees and performance is going into 2024. I'm recording this video in 2023, so this will get dropped in 2024, probably around January, maybe February. And so the dividend rates going into 2024 for Mass Mutual was at 6% for 2023. It's now increasing to 6.1%. And depending on the type of whole life product you get, there's 10 pay, 15 pay, uh, high early cash value, L100. So there's different designs, the guaranteed interest rate will be anywhere between 2 and 3.75%. Then with Guardian, Guardian 2023 was at 5.75%. It's going to be increased to 5.9%. Guaranteed rate is 3%. And the policy loan average, average policy loan rate across the board is anywhere between 5 and 8% as of 2023. That number will probably go slightly higher uh, in 2024 now that these rates are increasing or it might stay the same say i'd say probably that range is probably gonna stay similar right now with guardian i was just looking at some illustrations that i've been working on with some clients so i literally just pulled this off of illustrations the 
fixed rate option is 5%. The variable rate option is 6.2%. And again, this could potentially change depending on when you actually get the policy in place. Same with mass mutual, fixed rate is 6%. The variable rate is anywhere I mean, as low as 5% if you acquired the policy prior to 2022, if I'm not mistaken. And in today's environment, I think it's probably gonna be around 5.72%. So these numbers are accurate, not pinpoint. I would say if you're looking for pinpoint accuracy, I would take a look at IBC Global's YouTube channel hosted by Steve Parisi. And I'll even have a video on the screen here and I'll have it rotating where it'll take you directly to the video. The most recent one that he put out goes into exactly how the interest rate gets produced really breaks down the math in terms of outside environment of the index and how the insurance companies look at this index I think it's the moody's corporate bond index and then there's a adjustment a trigger of 0.5 percent so if the rate goes if the index rate that the insurance company is basing their loan interest rates off of if it increases in any given year by 0.5 percent or higher then you the policy holder owner would have an increase but if the rates only increase by less than 0.50 percent then if i'm not mistaken you do not experience a rate increase so he goes very very in depth on that i highly recommend watching that video this is more of just a summary and then really going into some of the things that have happened in the industry and things that you should be aware of right so moving forward guaranteed rates uh prior to 2022 were at four percent typically that number has now dropped, right? So we see that guaranteed rates went down. Dividend rates also went down. Now we're starting to see dividend rates increase going forward into 2024. We've seen loan interest rates go down and we also seen them go up as well. So they went down, now they're going back up slightly. So now when transitioning the conversation over to some big things that have happened, I wanna say this year, if I'm not mistaken, is when it occurred either either this year or last year, 2023 or 2022. I can't remember. I think it was 2023, early 2023. Mass Mutual put out a internal document, and you could watch a video done by Chris Kirkpatrick, Life 180, where he literally reads the document. And it was an internal document, I believe, sent out to staff as well as insurance agents, uh, essentially banning the infinite banking concept saying in specific words that the client you guys you know are being taught how to use the cash value like a checking account and move money in and out borrow leverage all this different stuff and i believe mass mutual just kind of took a stand and said hey we're really we're not a fan of this we don't like this because we can see implications of people messing up or maybe what's what has been happening is after so many years or whatever maybe there was a high amount of policies being lapsed or surrendered or people not being able to pay back their policy loans because maybe they were under some kind of assumption or philosophy on how to use these things. And so what that did for content creators like myself and other educators that spend a lot of time really breaking down the details, we just need to do more work now. I think we have to also pay attention to our language if you're someone that is using Mass Mutual as an option to provide to your clients. So this isn't every life insurance company banning infinite banking. In fact, there are life insurance companies i would say like lafayette or emeritus or even penn if i'm not mistaken that are actually pro infinite banking so you have a major mutual life insurance company that relatively large that actually participates and collaborates with other content creators on the infinite banking concept actually promoting actually helping the insurance agent when they're designing policies and they're talking to the staff, to the to the insurance company directly, there's support there. Whereas with a mass mutual, there would be no support if you're using that kind of language, right? So it's it's really, I think it's a language issue going on. And there's also a philosophy, which I think is the main problem behind all this is really Infinite banking is a marketing term and it's used to sell, right? To, to gain attention 
on a very boring kind of a product, whole life insurance, right? It's kind of boring. So marketers like myself, content creators like myself, salespeople like myself will come up with terms that are very attractive to the eye. Infinite bank, become your own banker, cash flow banking, dynamic banking, uh, bank on yourself, tax-free banking, positive arbitrage, right? All these different marketing terms. It has its pros, has its cons. I have used probably all of these terms at least once before in terms of providing the education and then also letting people know at the end of the day, this is what they're saying, whole life insurance for the most part, right? I think what is going to happen is we may see more regulation coming soon for insurance agents in terms of how they market. And the, the big issue is the, the concept in theory is, is amazing, I think, it's, it's awesome. <clears throat> and I've been able to experience it for myself and actually get results. But what happens is there's misrepresenting that that goes on. So mi misrepresenting the concept of leveraging cash value can cause harm for policy holder holders, resulting in lapse or surrendering or canceling policies because then they hear that infinite banking is a scam or something's wrong with it or it's not going to work or they get cold feet or they get buyer's remorse because they got their policy designed a certain way, thinking it would do a certain thing, and then it's not doing that certain thing. So it really messes things up. But I think under, under that, the even bigger problem is this, this word right here, the positive arbitrage myth, I believe is the main problem here. And the, and the idea is the agent educates the client, hey, you're gonna be earning 6.1%, 5.9%, and you'll have a fixed rate of 5%. So you know, let's use Guardian, for example. Let's say you buy a policy, this is your dividend rate, 5.9%, and your fixed loan interest rate is 5%. So Denzel, if you you know pay 10,000 a year into a policy, and this is what you're earning on your 10K, right? Or let's just say of the 10K you put in, there's, 7,000 in cash value day one, that 7,000 is gonna earn 5.9%. And if you decide to borrow, guess what? You borrow at 5% and you're gonna create a positive arbitrage of 0.9%. So sometimes that, and comment below if you've actually experienced this with an agent, if they said something like this along, along the lines, like if they said something like that. If we actually ran the math, behind that, we may come to find out that in fact, I am not earning 5.9% net. This is 5.9% gross. Gross is very different from net. In fact, in the very first year of say starting a policy where you dump in 10 and you have seven in cash value, technically you lost 30% of your starting capital, right? So there was a 30% loss there. Now on the 7,000, you're earning this dividend rate of 5.9% gross, but the net could be a negative rate of return. Even though say the money grew to 7,000, $100 or $7,200 or whatever the number is, that's not 5.9%. So there's misrepresentation going on when the client is being educated on how they can borrow this seven, go do something with it and earn a say 5% rate of return somewhere. ROI. So they're going to borrow a portion of the seven. Let's say they borrow 6,000 to earn 5% somewhere, right? Whatever it is, let's, let's, let's run those, let's run that. So 6,000 times 5%, it's only $300. You have to minus any fees that occurred to acquire that 5% investment and taxes and the amount of time it takes to say, get that 6K back. Like what if it was 6K that's locked up? When does it get released, right? after so many years or after one year, how, how, what is the timeline, right? You make three on six, this 6K, you're being charged 5%, $300. And the agent says you're gonna earn 5.9% on the seven. So 7,000 times 5.9%, $413. So that may be the math that they're running. And they say positive arbitrage of $113, which is, that's not true. Because even if you earn this 413, where does that four turn, where does that $413 go? You don't pay the $300 interest charge from the policy loan 
out of pocket. So on year two, year two, you go to pay in 10,000 again, mind you, you have a $300 interest bill. If you don't pay that $300 from the 10,000, the insurance company pulls it from the 413. If you actually even got 413, we just got done saying, you're not actually even gonna get 413. You're lucky you get $100 in the first year, right? Because it's a, it's a negative return after you put the 10 in. It's going to take multiple years just to break even. So that that's a huge problem right here. So what's happening is, I think, content creators like myself make shorts, make videos. People take things out of context. It's on both sides. It's the client. It's also the agent. We're not communicating enough. And that leads to people making mistakes. So what ends up happening every single year, you're paying in 10, you're say not covering the interest and you paid in the 10, now you have more cash value, then you take out another loan in year two and now that interest on top of the original loan is now a higher amount, now there's more interest, you think you're earning this five or six or seven or eight, whatever the rate is, that's gonna help you offset and that's not the case. Then what ends up happening? The cash value gets drained. Then you start getting letters on the insurance company, hey, you now have a massive interest bill that needs to get taken care of. Your policy is in risk of lapsing. Even when you say pay in the 10, you have to pay in more money just to cover the, the interest if it gets so bad that you're not paying back the loans. So that can result in a major issue. So I want to give an example of what positive arbitrage can actually look like what it could actually look like if done correctly so positive arbitrage is a possibility but I don't think it can be achieved by the policy itself necessarily there might be a situation in time for example in my personal life insurance policy this is my policy it was established in 2019 guaranteed rate was four percent my loan interest rate whenever I borrow is 5.66%. If in fact, with Guardian specifically, if I was to borrow out $100,000, Guardian charges 5.66% upfront. So 100,000 times 5.66, and it's like a couple of numbers after that, so I'm just kind of rounding here. So it would be somewhere around this number is what I would, I would get charged by Guardian upfront. They bill the interest up front right so it's simple interest amortized annually up front if you pay that out of pocket up front you receive the discount so it's a discounted interest rate of 5.66 the actual interest rate is six percent if you wait and do not pay the interest then you end up paying six thousand dollars on the hundred thousand right so what i do personally is i borrow the hundred and then I immediately pay the 5,660 upfront. So now I get a discount on the interest. Now, in addition, the insurance company Guardian, a direct recognition. So it's, this is the direct recognition policy loan that I'm doing on the 100 grand. And the crediting rate, if I'm not mistaken, is 6%. So on the 100 grand, they're gonna credit me $6,000. But here's the thing, in order for this to actually create positive arbitrage, I need to pay this out of pocket, not from the policy, okay? That's important. So I'm actually gonna pay that out of pocket, upfront, plus what did I do with the 100 grand? Now, what I do personally, and what I have done in the past, done a couple things in the past where I might've run some expenses through here, might've financed something through here, okay? Um, but, some, but what I like to do where I get the highest return is I take that 100 grand and I put it into business. I put it into my business to generate more income. So let's say I spend money on marketing. Let's say I spent $100,000 on marketing in my business. And that resulted in income 300 grand. So I spent 100 and I made $300,000 in my marketing strategy for my business. Business has products and services that it sells. And then it generates a $300,000 return. So that is I 3x 100 grand. So that that's much better form of positive arbitrage where at the same time now that so I have a new I have a new 300 grand here and obviously you know minus taxes right and all that that comes with it in the business. But you and then minus expenses right and all that. 
that comes with having that kind of a revenue, that hundred grand is still earning that crediting rate, right? Which is gonna be, say, that number 6,000. But I still pay the interest of the 5,660. So you can make an argument there, okay, there's a, a very small positive arbitrage, guys. This is nothing like to lose your bananas over, right? There's nothing to get really excited about. $340 positive arbitrage. No, what's really exciting is whatever you did with the 100 grand. And so in the example I gave earlier, where you have twofold of a problem, people are thinking they're getting this mystical, magical, positive arbitrage, and they're really not. The number is low, insignificant, or not even there. Then if you're being told to run expenses, and I've made videos on this personally, where I talked about running expenses through a life insurance policy to generate a positive internal arbitrage. But it, after so many years of practicing that, right, and I've made videos where Hey, I, I did this. I experimented it to see if it actually worked. When I say in my scenario, when I say it worked, yes, it worked. We're not talking an ungodly amount of, you know, rate of return. We're not talking some magical, mystical high rate of return here. No, no, no. What that did for me was it, it bought time for sure. It bought me time to max fund the policy. It gave me the opportunity. If we looked at it over the long haul, performance, the way I funded my policies was I used a combination of savings dollars, money that I was already saving every single month, every single year. So it's money that I'm saving plus cash flow, right? So in addition to saving money, I have positive cash flow. So I'm saving money, I have positive cash flow. And then I had, and I, I have videos where I broke this down to the T where I had about 20 or yeah, I think it was around 20,000 ish of expenses that before I spent the money in a year on those expenses, I ran it through a credit card to get cash back rewards, statement credits that resulted in a net savings of like five to 6,000 bucks or more. So it was a combination of running bills through a credit card for two, 3% cash back rewards on say 15, 20 plus thousand dollars of expenses in an entire year. Then the type of bills that I chose to run through the card was bills that I could pay annually where I would save anywhere from 10 to upwards of 20% on the bill itself. So if the monthly bill is $100 a month, but if I pay annually, I save $100. $200 on the so instead of paying $1,200, pay a thousand bucks. That's a 20% savings, $200 plus $1,000 through the card, 3% cash back, 30 bucks on a thousand bucks, $230 in savings. Do that compounded over so many expenses over a 12 month period that was resulting in my favor of multiple thousands of dollars in cash savings. That's cash back into my economy. I kept, guess where that money went? I pushed it into the life insurance. That life insurance policy is now growing at a rate of return. So basically I used expenses in a very, very, very strategic way. Combination of multiple factors, not just the policy itself, not just borrowing and paying any bill you want, but paying very specific bills through credit cards, getting the maximized cashback rewards. And on top of that particular credit card, getting the cashback rewards within the first 90 days, I'm getting two, three, four, five hundred dollars in statement credit for running $3,000 worth of expenses on that card. And that card is 0% on purchases for 12 months. So I allow the expenses to sit in a credit card at 0% cost, get all that cash back rewards, the money that's in my income that was already going to be allocated to the ex expenses, I pushed it all into the life insurance. Now, now the money is sitting in cash value and it's growing. By the time I borrow the money out to pay the credit card off in full, what I gained in cash back rewards, savings, statement credit, reduction of the bill itself, plus what I'm being credited in the cash value, whether it was year one, two, three, four, whatever it is, that created a positive arbitrage. But again, even despite all of that, we're only talking a couple thousand dollars-ish in, in terms of a gain. So did it work? Yes. Should everyone do it? I don't think so. I think the vast majority will mess it up, if I'm being honest. I mean, we're talking, you have to be 
very methodical, very disciplined. You have to have multiple things have to work. You have to obviously get the policy in place at a certain point in time in the year. Then you have to get a certain credit card with certain amount of cashback rewards with a certain amount of bills that you can reduce, hold it on the card, pay the monthly minimum payment, and then have enough capital up front to front load the policy so that there's enough cash value in there to borrow and pay off all those bills and then rinse and repeat. And you got to do that over and over again. So I actually personally experimented this and did this for a couple of years. And I can honestly tell you that did it work? Y yes, it worked, just not as efficiently as I initially had thought. Now you could also make the argument, well, Denzel, you're, you're talking about running 20 plus thousand dollars worth of bills. And, and once that dollar enters your cash value, that dollar is going to earn for the rest of your life. So you could say over the long haul projection of say 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Oh, absolutely. A phenomenal positive arbitrage gain. No doubt whatsoever. Here's the problem. If you were to do that, every single year and not pay back the loan. See, that's the issue here. If you don't pay back the loan, you now have a much bigger interest cost every single year that you're floating the expense and keeping it in the policy. That's going to be a problem long term. So what I do is I bought time in the early years to get that max funded dollar amount in there as my income grew. Because not only did I borrow just to run bills, but I also borrowed to invest in the business and grow the income and grow my knowledge and, and education. Now more income is coming in. I no longer need to do that. I can just keep running the bills through the credit card, get all the points I want in the world. Just keep doing that. I don't have to keep pulling to cover expenses. So eventually I pay down the loans. I pay down the interest. I always pay the interest upfront out of pocket, not from the insurance policy, not from the cash value, because that'll interrupt the compounded growth. And then that's where you get these problems. So we're talking about, we're just talking about seven to 10 levels deep here on running bills through a policy, offsetting the interest cost, creating a positive arbitrage. Can it be done? Yes. How are the results? Not as great as if you would have taken that money and say invested it in your business, try to increase your income, try to take that money and actually increase the top line rather than the bottom line. You're going to do a much better job increasing, I would argue. Okay, But if you were to do what I do, it's you're, you're trying to solve for a particular issue circumstance for a temporary period of time. It's not a permanent strategy. So running your income through a policy and then living out of the policy is not a permanent strategy in my opinion. It's not a wealth building strategy in my opinion. It's a buying time type of a strategy, buying you the time, buying you the insurance, buying you the the max funded, getting able getting to that max funded amount if you don't have the capital or cash flow now you're leveraging debt or you're leveraging expenses to do a thing and then you're getting two uses out of the dollars but that is not a long-term play. So I'm someone that actually did that to prove that, hey, it doesn't really work like they're saying. As a content creator, educator that has done it, practice it, I'm saying, hey, this is probably, this isn't your get rich, get wealth, get very wealthy plan here, permanent strategy. I don't recommend running all your income or majority of your income through a policy, barring out to pay bills and live off of it that is not a long-term play. It is a short-term play. And if you go back and watch my videos, you'll see me touch on that. Where I'm like, you know, eventually we want to invest, make more money. You want to buy whatever time you want to buy right now because you're trying to start early. Let's say you're trying to lock in that health benefit now. You're trying to lock in, you know, a, a properly designed policy younger and get a higher MEC limit. And you're trying to max fund it to, to get as much po money in there growing early in the early years so that in the later years, you really start to see the compounded effect. That's only going to work if you what? Increase the income so that you can eventually pay back the policy loan, pay the interest and continue to max fund the policy, right? So in my example here, if I'm borrowing 100, 100K and let's say my max funding amount is 70,000 a year, right? Like that's, that is my number that I pay into my guardian policy every year is 70,000 bucks. So I need to have the 70 plus the loan interest, whatever I carry in that year, 5,660. And I need to pay that out of pocket plus max fund to continue to have that positive arbitrage. And even then the number's not that crazy internally. 
It's the external I'm all about. What did I do with the 100? How efficient was I with the 100? And I'm here to tell you that if you're running bills through your policy, running expenses, and you're not doing the other three to four elements that I incorporated with the credit card and the cash back rewards and the statement credits and, and then the 0% for 12 months, paying the monthly minimum, if you're not doing none of those, you're under an illusion. You're what my fiance says, Delulu. You're being Delulu. You're not running the math properly and you need to run the math more efficiently, more effectively. So that is for you, the customer or the agent out there that is a new, you're starting to create content, you're getting yourself out there, you're building a following. Run the extra math behind it, right? Let's not, let's not get ourselves in trouble, right? So I've always been a person that loves to run the math. And then even then I create, I create uh, overestimations where let's say the loan interest rate, the fixed rate regarding is, is, is 5%. Like typically what I do is I will underestimate the internal rate of return on the cash value. So I'll intentionally lower it to see if there's positive gain in, in a worst case scenario. And if there is, then I'm like, well, for sure, it's gonna do better than what I'm illustrating. And that's usually what I do with my velocity banking case studies, my infinite banking case studies. I'm always making it look worse than what it is. And then an actual application turns out to look way better, right? So this has been a very, very in-depth video. Hopefully it was very valuable for you. Subscribe, check out those two videos I mentioned with Steve Parisi regarding the dividend rates and loan rates. Then check out Chris Kirkpatrick's video with the Mass Mutual and you know, his thoughts on that. I thought it was a great video. And if you are someone that is looking to incorporate a whole life insurance policy in your wealth building strategy, protection, building assets, you want to leverage, you want to do these different things. You want to combine velocity, infinite banking, becoming your own banker. You want to do all these wonderful things. You can click the link below to get a hold of Steve Parisi and his team. That's who I use for my insurance. You can also get a hold of Caleb from Better Wealth and just mention my name. He has an awesome team and you can click the link below as well. So I'll put it in the comments of both of those individuals that you can reach out to, just giving you the options. Or if you wanna work with me directly, you can also make that request as well by filling out a contact form, getting hold of me, emailing me directly, and we'll make it happen, right? So my name is Denzel Rodriguez, personal finance geek of the 21st century. Have a wonderful day. God bless, we'll be talking soon.